Welcome back to the morning blend. Well, we are over halfway through sleep timber. This month is all about the ways the quality of your sleep can affect the quality of your life. Today's sleep and sinus surgeon Dr. Mothin Kandula joins us to talk about a sleep disorder that millions of people have and maybe don't even know it. Hey, doctor. Hey, good morning. Good morning to you. It's always great to see you. I think it's great that we have a month dedicated to the quality of our sleep because I think it's something that a lot of people really struggle with. They do, they do. And I think a lot of people don't really know how much they're struggling because they're trying to go to sleep. So I think um, when most people think about sleep and most people think about getting a good quality of sleep, I think your thoughts go to pillows and mattresses and comforters and things that are nice to have. But I think most people don't realize that the most fundamental thing that there is to sleep is your breathing and specifically your airway. And so your nose and throat, we call those the breathing triangle. Uh, millions and millions of people have noses and throats that don't work properly and if your nose and or throat doesn't work properly you can't good, get, get a good night, night's sleep so for instance if somebody's throat doesn't work properly that can lead to snoring or sleep apnea uh, which is a big deal and a lot of folks have those issues also have nose issues so again it's it's sort of this silent thing because it's happening when you're sleeping a lot of times it compromises people during the day uh, but then definitively at night if you have these issues going on you're never going to get a good night's sleep so we just showed this graphic and I'd like you to explain it if you would. It's the breathing triangle. What are you showing with this graphic? Yeah, it's, it's your airway. So you've got your two nostrils and then the back of your throat. So there's three points of entry for you to breathe. And so if those areas are working properly, then you've got a good airway and you've got a fighting chance to have a good night's sleep. That's wonderful. If those areas, if any one of those areas aren't working properly, then you're not going to get a good night's sleep. You have an improper airway uh, and it can, it can really be a devastating sort of domino effect. If somebody doesn't have a breathing triangle that's working for them, uh, it is by definition working against them and that's a big problem. I think that illustration really helps us understand it. You mentioned sleep apnea. Is this a significant problem in America? Yeah, it's a, it's a huge, huge issue, and uh, it's massively undertreated. So about 80% of the folks who have sleep apnea aren't getting treated right now. About 10% of Americans have sleep apnea. So that's millions and millions, tens of millions of people who are suffering with this. And then unfortunately, the folks that go in to get seek, seek treatment, a lot of the, those folks aren't sort of seeking treatment in places that can really help them. So it's a massive issue that creates issue not only during uh, the nighttime when somebody's trying to sleep at night, but also during the day. And and it can create a whole uh, lot of issues for somebody. I'd love for you to explain what happens when someone has sleep apnea because one of the things people hear about is snoring and snoring can be a sign of sleep apnea, right? Yeah, absolutely. So snoring is basically your body crying when you're sleeping at night. Your airway is crying and it's saying, I can't breathe. And so when somebody's snoring, the back of the throat is vibrating and that's creating that sound. When somebody has sleep apnea, that area shuts down completely. So somebody's trying to take a breath in and their throat shuts down and it doesn't let them let that happen. Now, the challenge is this is happening internally when somebody is asleep. And so a lot of times it's sort of it's sort of like a silent intruder, meaning something's happening that's massively devastating. If you flipped it around, and you said, you know, even one time during one night of your life, if somebody walked into your bedroom, uh, snuck in and, and, and strangled you, basically shut your airway down so you were suffocating and you didn't know what was happening, what's going to happen is your body's going to wake up, you're going to go into a sweat, you're going to go into a panic, and, and you'll never forget that night. The challenge is if that happens night after night, sometimes hundreds of times every single night, that that person that it's happening to doesn't know that that intruder is sneaking up on them. And in fact, it's, it's completely silent, which is, which is scary. I think, you know, I think in medicine we do a poor job of explaining the impact and severity of this, uh, of, of the conditions that we treat. This one is even more challenging is people are asleep. They don't know what's happening. And so when you put it like that, I mean, if, if you've ever choked on something, if you've ever had difficulty breathing ever once in your life, you know how much of a panic that sets into you. And to have that happening throughout the night, every single night, uh, it's not okay. It's not right. Something should be done about it. You know, and I'm glad this month, and it's not, it's one month during the year. There's the, the other 11 that we should also pay attention to this is there's, it's, it's time to put an end to this. It's time to say enough is enough. And it's a sign it's time to really do something about it. Time to get treatment for sure. And that's why, you know, you talk about that interrupted sleep, that intruder that sort of shuts off your airways, sometimes hundreds of times a night. That's why people are so tired um, sometimes. They, they think, oh, I slept all night, 
but really they're they're b being awakened so much that they're not getting restful sleep. And there are actually some diseases that if, if you have this obstructed sleep, this sleep apnea, it, it can cause serious mm -hmm. health consequences. Absolutely. Yeah, it's 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 devastating in its own right. It, you never get a good night's sleep. You're always tired during the day. You it, it increases risk of, of car accidents and things like that. So that's horrible. Uh, to top that off, uh, if you have sleep apnea that's not getting treated properly, your risks of heart attacks, strokes, diabetes, depression, Alzheimer's, you know, I can go on and on and on because these are all the issues that are connected to back to sleep apnea. Unfortunately, if somebody passes away from a heart attack that its underlying issue was sleep apnea, the sleep apnea doesn't get put on the death certificate. That's not what anybody talks about. They talk about, oh, it's sad that, that so-and-so passed away early on. And at the end of the day, if they had sleep apnea their whole life, that was the thing that was causing it. And so the part of the problem with awareness is people don't know to connect the dots all the way back to the beginning. And if you do, you know, I don't want a heart attack. You don't want a heart attack. I don't want any of these things going on. And if you could do something to help to prevent those things, you would do it. And if you could do something to help to uh, allow a loved one to present, prevent these things, you would do it. Um, and, and really, that's why I'm here is, is really trying to make the case that you should do something. Now is the time. And what should we do? Real quickly, doctor, there are good treatment options, right? Yeah, there really are. I mean, I think a lot of times people sort of don't seek treatment because they have a foregone conclusion in their mind that it's a one-stop shop, like, oh, you're going to you know, you're gonna go in and you're going to get this thing and, and that's it. The good news, if you have sleep apnea, um, you know, that's an airway issue. The good news is if you go into a place that, that treats airway issues, like us, uh, then we have a variety of options. So it's not a one-stop uh, shop it's, it, or one-size-fits-all. It's a custom approach. And so there are a lot of office-based procedures that can be very effective for folks who have airway issues and sleep apnea issues, uh, there are a combination of treatments that can be effective. So the first step is really getting an understanding about what's going on, how it's impacting you, and then designing a game plan that's specific to you uh, to really get you success, get you sleeping properly at night. I mean, they, the thing that drives me is that there, there are all these folks who are sitting on the sidelines of the life that they're supposed to have. And then yet, when we, when we when folks come in and seek treatment and we can get somebody where they need to be, all of a sudden, it's it's sort of like this this epiphany, this, this sort of, uh, wow, I wish should have done something sooner and so it makes you it drives you it drives me to want to say you know for all those folks out there you know do something get in uh, we can help there are options uh, many of them are remarkably simple yeah you're truly changing lives doctor it was so great to have this education during sleep timber thank you so much Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's never been easier to get diagnosed and receive treatment because you can do so much virtually and via telemedicine right now. There are six Advent locations around Wisconsin and one in the Chicago area. To make an appointment at any one of those offices and find the one closest to you, call this number today. It's 414-771-6780. Don't waste another night of weak sleep. You can also ask questions by emailing info at adventnose.com slash adventnose.com.